Uh, it's a survival event. Uh, I'm Travis. And I'm Lucas. And uh, yeah, we'll be here to bring you these games today. Still trying to, we're having some problems. The Keyforge site is uh, not being very responsive today. So we're not getting, we're having a hard time getting the lists entered, uh, which has made us a little bit slower than we might otherwise be. But uh, we do have Kirk's list. I can at least bring that one up as they start running ahead. So, right away, we've got a pretty good Shadow's House coming out. Right now, we've got the Untamed board on the field, though. We have a Witch of the Eye, a Dust Pixie, and a Niphilite. Good Amber Generation, some Reap and Recursion, and the Vault Keeper coming down, preventing things from being stolen. Not really a threat at the moment, but the Vault Keeper's going to deal with that Witch of the Eye, which is a really good way to loop any Untamed cards. And it seems like with all of this Sergeant Zekiel, a card that allows the neighbor to fight, it seems like Benson's able to clear that untamed sweep pretty quickly. No amber for himself, or actually one amber from that Sigil of Brotherhood. But, again, now we have a board on Benson's side and Kirk with the response. So Sigil of Brotherhood, just why we are waiting for Kirk to play, is a card that, it's an Omni effect, you can pop it and then use Sanctum out of turn. So. Library of Babel coming down on Kirk's side. Going to give him a card draw when he calls Logos. A Labrador coming down for an archive of card. And we have the Valen Analyst. So the Valen Analyst, every time you activate an artifact, I believe, uh, it's activate. It might be play, but I'm pretty sure it's when you activate an artifact, you gain an Amber as well. So we have Benson going Logos' this turn. Mother, classic card. Good card to have. Going to give him a larger hand to draw from. And Experimental Therapy, which is going to come out, and you mind just pulling up Experimental Therapy? I'm yes, so Experimental oh, Therapy. Oh, sorry. No, no problem at all. Yeah, it is the now, one where... Now I know why I'm so confused, because we got the players backwards, right? <laughs> oh, is that what we had? So Experimental Therapy, the one that when you stun the creature, it now belongs to all the houses. So that Ganymede Archivist is going to essentially, if it stays on the board, be a archive and reap every turn uh, if... Benson decides not to deal with that. So, oh, okay, so we had them completely reversed. We just had them on the wrong sides of the board. Ah, uh, fair enough. Okay. So I'm looking at Benson's deck. He has three Dust Pixies. Coupled with Chota Hazri, the creature where you lose an Amber but then forge a key at current cost. We've got a lot of ways for Benson to just come out of nowhere and get a key when you least expect it. But on Kirk's side, a lot of control, double routine jobs, lots of steel. We have some interesting ways to actually prevent stealing with the Vault Keeper. Yeah, this will be an interesting matchup to say the least. Let's see how it plays out. Having a quick look at the discard. Yep, we have a Mimicry in hand. Mimicry lets you copy an action from the discard pile, so it makes sense. Just checking to see if there's anything he wants to grab before he calls any houses. A Doorstep to Heaven in hand as well, which might come in handy now that Kirk is pushing 5 Amber. Doorstep of Heaven reducing both players to 5 Amber. Let's see what Benson does. Full Moon, getting an Amber from Snuffle Gator. Full Moon being every time you play a creature, gain an Amber. It seems like that's the only untamed creature in hand, though, so... Not going to get as much of a benefit as I'm sure he would have liked. If he had that with his Dust Pixie, that would have been an easy 3 Amber. But the Mimicry. Mimicry into Phase Shift. Into Terms of Redress to capture 2 Amber on the Snuffle Gator. Not bad. Putting himself up to 4, reducing Kirk down to 3. So yes, uh, as we mentioned, this is a survival event. Uh, that means every player brings 3 uh, decks to the event. Uh, ranks them in order. And then we'll play them in that order. They're basically the three lives they have. Every loss will eliminate that deck. So I'm not sure where these players are sitting right now, but I overheard them talking I, I, about... Kirk was 2-1, and one, so uh, okay. I imagine they're both 2-1. and one. It's possible that Benson's paired down or paired up, but I suspect they're both 2-1. and one. Fair enough. I heard them both talking a little bit of strategy. I heard Kirk asking, uh, did you put your strongest deck second? So there might be a little bit of strategy as to where you place your strongest deck. So they both might be, if they're 2-1, and one, on their absolute strongest deck in their libraries of Keyforge decks. So it'll be an interesting matchup for sure. So we have another Untamed turn, a couple Reaps coming out, a fight to get that Amber off the Snuffle Gator, and of course, Experimental Therapy allowing that Ganymede Archivist to unstun, adding a Frankus to the board, a beefy 6-1 creature where every time he fights, he gets to capture an Amber. Lots of control from Kirk out there. Doorstep coming out, probably a little expected. Gains an Amber, reduces both players to 5. No harm to Benson, but reducing 3 Amber off of Kirk over there. So a good play. 
Blinding Light stuns every Sanctum creature. Board control coming out. Out the wazoo for Benson over here. Now let's see what he follows up with. Using, looks like, stress tokens from X-Wing to as as stun counters. Now, Mantle of the Zealot. I'm not sure what the Mantle of the Zealot does. There we go. You may use this creature if it belonged to an active house. Oh, not too bad. So, like an experimental therapy, but without the stun. Pretty good. So, now, Surgeon Zekiel, we have a 4 1, 4 attack, 1 armor. Belonging to every house. Not too bad. Unstunning the Ganymede, but he's calling shadows. Miasma is to prevent the Key Forge. Miasma, of course, causing Benson to skip his next Key Forge step, as you can see right there. Shadow Self. So he's going to push the creatures off perfectly so we can see a little bit more, but it seems like there's a Shadow Self. There's a Shadow Self and something else, I believe. Next to Mother, and we can't quite get that other card, but the Shadow Self is going to soak damage for that Mother, which allows Kirk to maintain that seven-card hand size for a little bit longer. Shadow Self being the creature where it doesn't deal any damage when you attack it, but it does soak any damage that goes to its neighbors. So that must be Naughty ever at the end. Yep, there we have it. Naughty the Thief. Action steal one, a solid card to have. So take hostages. Every time a creature fights, it will capture one. Going to fight Shadow Self. Capturing one Amber still. Kirk is going to be at... Still going to be at six. So still able to forge on his turn. But we'll see if anything's going to follow it up. Uh, terms of Redress. There we go. Terms of Redress. Gain an Amber. Capture two. Onto a friendly creature. So let's see where he puts it. Now, what do you think? Do you think he's going to stack it all on Zekiel because he's the higher power? Or are you going to think he's going to spread it out? No. Nope. And oh. we have our answer. Going right over to Remiel. Interesting. I guess it does force him to expend more resources getting that back. He has to use two creatures or fight with at least two creatures to attack two different creatures to get that Amber. But we'll see. It looks like a strong Logos hand on Benson's, but we'll see what Kirk responds with with all this captured Amber and a Sanctum House beefy, but stunned at the moment. So Benson is now pushing, he's at 8 Amber to Kirk's 4 Amber. And let's see what responses we have. We have a Naughty the Thief with some steel. Again, we have a Shadow House chock full of stealing, but I don't think, or I don't know if he has any of those things in hand. No. I mean, he could have bait and switched and then a Naughty to prevent the Fair Forge enough. this turn, but I don't think he has a bait and switch. And you do want a little bit more than two amber off of that but yeah you 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 know you can't always get your optimum uh but with the bane switch errata actually two is the cap right oh that's right sorry yeah i so, forgot no I, it's easy to forget you know the, yeah you play all these decks where suddenly you're like ah, i forged my key i'm gonna steal all your amber and then they change the bait and switch on us but even a two amber swing you're absolutely right that would put him down to five but it doesn't seem like he has it he is going with actually it's hard to tell because he's starting with his experimental therapy uh <laughs> oh it is logos so Mother is going to attack. Four damage is going to go into the Shadow Self. A good play. Mother perfectly healthy. Getting an Amber back. Going to reap with the Ganymede Archivist. Which is going to let him archive a card. Looks like it's going to be... Uh, I didn't quite catch it. I think it might have been the Virtuous Works in his hands. Going to play a Sloppy Lab Work. So he goes from Lab Work to Sloppy Lab Work. Discarding a Staunch Knight. Archiving another mystery card that we will see eventually. And the Spectral Tunneler comes down for the Amber. Interesting card. You tap it. One of your creatures is considered a flank creature, and it gains the effect Reef Draw a card. So an interesting ability, special coupled with cards like Doc Bookton, which already give a card draw. So we'll see how that works out. Benson going to be the first one to forge a key this game. All right. So Benson's board's looking a little bit a little anemic at the moment. Yeah, it's a not little, a big board. <laughs> no, just a Commander Remuel against the world. But we have the Library Access. So let's see if anything good comes from that. Of course, the library access also eroded. Now it is going to be purged, so you can only use it once. But I see the wild wormhole in hand. That's an automatic two-card draw. He seems to have a hand chock full of Logos cards. So let's see how much of his deck he can get through. Doc Bookton, draw a card. Another Logos card. Spectral Tunneler, draw a card. Let's see how far this can go. Mother, draw a card. Goodness. Okay, we were talking about a small board, but it seems slowly yeah, but surely. This board's coming back here. It's coming right back. Yep. Oof, a good card to grab. 
Probably not what he wanted right now, because you can combo that with the Dust Pixies for an insane amount of Amber Gain. But sure. this is going to be a really excellent bit of control for himself. He can bounce that Ganymede Archivist back, getting rid of Experimental Therapy. Sanctum Suite is already stunned in damage. Probably not going to bounce Yeah, get rid of Mother. Yeah, Mother would be another great one. And even getting Naughty the Thief, make him come back in exhausted. He could theoretically bounce one of his own creatures for more draw. You're right. You're absolutely correct. Just make the absolute most of that library access. That could be interesting. And if he only wants really two targets, why not, right? He does. So they're just trying to fig So they're trying to figure out what they drew from library access. So he played library access, drew a card or sorry, played wild wormhole, drew a card, played yeah. nature's call, and now they're wondering if they drew that card for nature's call. I can't remember, can you? I I think he did, but I can't say for sure and we're not going to So I I do think that he still needs to draw for nature's call, but I can't even say definitively. I'm going to let the people at the table do the math. This is the challenges of bookkeeping with Keyforge. When you have so many card effects happening all at once, when you have bouncing and drawing and library accessing and library of babbling and all the libraries in the world. So with the math, they've determined that with the draw from library of Babel, with the wild wormhole gaining two card draws and all of that jazz, he should in fact be at eight cards. He is now going to draw up to eight cards. He did not draw the for the Nature's Call. They have determined and settled it between them. Oh, yeah. I was just yeah. talking about a little bit of bookkeeping. It's always a bit of a challenge when you have so many effects right. bouncing and moving and shuffling around. So, yeah, I don't know how much you explained, but I, I'll do it one more time. Sure. Um, plays uh, Library Access, goes down to five cards. Right. Uh, every card he plays afterwards is replaces itself. Right. Uh, Library of Babel lets him draw one, so, so that would bring him back up to six. Yep. Nature's Call didn't require him play. It, it was piggybacked off the wormhole. Yep. That'll take him to seven. Yep. When he bounced a character back, that would be, or that would be the card. That, sorry. Well, wormhole wouldn't put him to seven. Nature's Call would put him to eight. Wouldn't it? No. No, it would put him to seven. Right. But Doc booked and bounced. It would be the eighth uh, card. Oh, correct. There we have it. Ah, <laughs> oh, the craziness. They're going to call a judge over, just double-checking twin bolt emissions, if I'm not mistaken, how it interacts poor, with... Poor Dominic. Uh, <laughs> the feature match area is a little separate from the rest of the Keyforge matches, so he has to run over. Well, he's going to get his 10,000 steps in, that's for sure. Uh, it seems like what the debate is is that uh, Shadow Self's at 7. So uh, deal 2 damage to one creature. Can they deal to the Shadow Self and then deal 2 damage to the Naughty the Thief, or does the damage have to be placed simultaneously and all get soaked and overkill the Shadow Self? So they have ruled that you can't kill the Shadow Self, then kill Naughty the Thief, which I think is the correct ruling. So now he's just picking another target for this Twin Bolt emission. And they're going to pop the Silver Tooth. Benson back at six. Kirk sitting at what I believe is eight, eight Amber. Sorry for the hiccup. And the library access hasn't stopped. It's is still, still going. the same turn? I was gone for a while, so I. It's still going. Playing the Howling Pit. Now everyone's going to have one extra card. Coupled with, though, Kirk's mother and Benson's mother, actually. We're going to be operating with eight-card hands by yeah. the looks of it. So that's going to be... <laughs> I was going to have all the cards in the world. Purge the library access. Ready all of his artifacts. And away we go. So Benson just reminding Kirk that he does, in fact, get Howling Pit's benefit like himself. And just Kirk with a mitt full of cards currently. Yes. Bates. Oh, yeah, he pulled up his Arca? No. He didn't pull up his Arca. That's, I think, from the Nature's Call plus Mother. Right, Nature's Call. But it seems like he has more than just from that. Too. Well, he'll have he'll have nine cards with the Nature's Call, right? Yeah. That's uh, quite a hand. So let's see what he does with uh, every card in his deck. Yeah, there's an extra card there from something. Looks like he has ten. Yeah, by the looks of it. And now he's going to pull an Archive. He's going to have more cards than we can keep oh, track of. Oh, did he have a Mother at the end that was bounced? He did. But he had two mothers. That's why. Oh, did he have two mothers? Was one off screen? Yes. Oh, uh, okay. All right. That makes sense. Oh, my goodness. Two mothers coupled with Howling Pit. Uh, Kirk's never going to be wanting for a card in his hand. I don't no. think so. Whatever strategy he's trying to unlock with this deck, he should have a pretty good statistic of drawing those into those cards. Pulling up the archives as well. <laughs> 12 card hand. No big deal. That is a Virtuous Works. Night of the Thief, stealing one. 
looks like it's going to be a shadow turn. Routine job, stealing another. Does he have the double routine job? Let's see it. Uh, Kirk kicking himself for some sequencing. Kirk's asking if he can fix his sequencing right now, but... So, Benson... Yeah. So Benson is going to let him take it back because he's going to let him bait and switch first, which allows him then to do the steal and steal, which puts Benson way lower than yeah. he would have been previously. Well, and Kirk higher. And Kirk much higher. That's, like a, that's an extra four-card swing. Yeah. So that was exceptionally generous of Benson because that was, uh, that was a heck of a swing. And that could be the turning point in the game. Yeah. That very well might be the turning point in the game. So we'll see what Benson has to respond with, but with the ghostly hand, just absolutely ramping him. I think Benson might be kicking himself for his generosity a little bit, but... Well, it, it'll all depend what's in his hand now. Yep. If he, I don't think he has anything like too much to protect, though. Uh, doorstep to heaven? Doorstep to heaven. He, uh, doorstep to heaven would be uh, quite painful it, right it would now. Be, it would be an okay card. That wouldn't be too bad. And I think he's rocking two of them, isn't he? Uh, no, only one. Only one. So, he did play that earlier, and I'm not sure. He has, I don't think he's burned through his whole deck yet, has he? Oh, no. So, I think he might be. Ugh. So, instead, it allows an extra two steal. And so, instead of being 5-5 five, five and without a bait and switch, they are now two to probably... Let's see. Two to 12. Yikes. That's, a, that's a, a big difference, but again, Benson playing the game like uh, an honorable gent. It is. It's Always a hard choice at this level of play. It's tough. So let's see what Benson has to respond with. Yeah, with a doorstep in his discard, uh, it's going <laughs> to be, be rough. rough. It's going to be big. Uh, it's going to be definitely rough, especially without that which of the eye on the field to recur anything. I'm not sure if Benson has the response he needs to that much of an amber swing, because once Kirk forges his second key, he's going to have enough amber for his third key. Right. Now, Benson does has the, have Chota Hazri. He does have some key cheating, but whether he has that in his hand, I'm not sure. Really, the bread and butter combo is triple dust pixie, nature's call, bounce your pixies back, play them, play them, play them, yeah. get a ton of amber, Chota Hazri, you're good to go. With which of the eye on the board to help recur that, a lot of setup, but it is a crazy, crazy combo. So let's see. Mulling over the cards in his hand right now, looking at a pile of amber. He's just trying to think of how to get to the things that are really going to make a difference. And I right, because I, he has a board where he can just ramp three cards is not bad. Drawing from. So he's going logos. Okay. If he does reap, 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 it dog booked on that's a three card, three. Well, so now in his hand. here's he got a chance. He's shuffled. So. We ah, all right. So now, he, what does he need? He needs to draw into a wild wormhole. <laughs> or yeah, because he doesn't have the phase shift, does he? No. No. So yeah, if he draws into the wild wormhole. Well, here let's let's bring up the list for folks at home who may want to puzzle this out. Is there a way? It seems like you're right, though. If he can wild wormhole into a doorstep to heaven. Yes. My goodness. There was a game once where I was about to win. My opponent played Merkins, which is a play a random card off the top of your deck. Played the one sure. card in my deck that made my keys cost 10 and lost me the game. So, you know, yeah. Key Forge is one of those things where anything can happen. And he is using Doc Bookton to just... We still got the Library of Babel. He's another shot. Uh, let's see what he gets. But again, setting that, how do you set that up, right? If you draw you don't, it, you if don't. you draw it's it, just your <laughs> that's definitely tough. But he himself is going to be pushing six amber. If he draws into the doorstep after he forges his own key, reduces Kirk, and you know, there's a hope. But I mean, yeah, it is still a way to prevent that final key, even if it's not going to be as big of a hit. Better yet, if he can draw into his key cheat at a prime time, he can skirt around. Doesn't matter how much amber Kirk has if he plays a little faster. If he can get into his cheat and generate enough, enough amber, and without his, you're right, without an untamed board. That's going to be tough. That's six amber. But I, I think he's going to be hard-pressed here to leave himself in a position where he can even forge his first key next turn. You're right, because if he can only get to six, then that's going to be a challenge for sure, because with the Shadow mm, House... Wow. He drew four cards, and none of them were Logos. Yeah. Crazy. I mean, a lot of his logos cards are out, are played in play already. So let's see what we got here. 
Kirk is forging, dropping six of his massive pile of amber, feeling like a dragon sitting atop a treasure hoard right now. Forged a key at five because of Titan mechanic. That's interesting. Right, I missed that. So he's going to probably want to cover that up so Benson doesn't get the benefit. It's hard to tell if it was on the flank because there's been cards off screen. I mean, I think he's okay with letting him do the benefit because uh, he knows Benson's cards. So leaving himself the opportunity to uh, oh. forge at five even if the does get the door stuck. But there he goes. He covers it up with the Raiding Knight, immediately stealing one. Or not stealing one, rather, by mistake. He is pulling his archives a little bit after the fact. Drawing three. Ooh. Sigil of Brotherhood. Benson is reduced to five. All right. So let's see what Benson has. Well, the dress up to have it now does seem much better, but who does, knows if he drew it. It does seem pretty tempting. <laughs> you know, it might not win you the game, but my goodness. If he didn't draw into the doorstep, that's rather unfortunate because I think that's the thing that's going to keep him into this game currently because you're right. He didn't even get to forge his second key, so there's no chance of the Chota Hazri coming out to slip that third key in real fast. Right. So he doesn't have it because he's still thinking. Yeah, I think it's a no-brainer if he does have it, right? I do see him have the double dust pixie and the nature's call in hand, which is frustrating. Because I wonder if he has the Chota there. He just needed to forge that key, but six wasn't going to be enough against that huge board. Let's see what we got here. Yeah. I think he's just playing out his absolutely bonkers untamed turn. As if I'm predicting this correct, yep, two dust picks has come down. That's a four amber swing. He plays Cho. Oh! Oh my goodness, can he forge two yeah, keys? Yeah, he can forge two keys. Because he can nature's call, so they're only five each. Holy cow. Wow, that was oh my goodness. a crazy play. Okay, we were not seeing that. I was not even thinking about having two keys forged by Chota in the same turn. Holy cow. No. How does he... Oh, because he nature's called him back. Uh, yeah, so he had five, goes up to nine with two dust pixies. Chota's goes down to two. Yes. Plays Nature's Call, goes up to three, plays them again, goes up to seven, Chota again, forges yeah, a yeah, key. Right. Just enough. Literally one amb there's just a perfect amount of amber to do that. That's nuts. That is crazy. That is absolutely crazy. I did not expect the double Chota play. What a way to come back after Kurt goes up to a crazy amount of amber after that whole turn where he stole and it looked just absolutely hopeless. Oof. Benson comes out swinging with the Nature's Call, Chota Hazri, Dust Pixie Call.